Dr. Edgar Yutibay, VP for Production and Business Affairs. Mrs. Miran Miranona Miranova. Miranona Flores, Board Secretary. Minyo Tanana graduates. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. First, a disclaimer, no? Um, Coming here, I was just really a, a wife coming here to support her husband because two days ago he says, Oh, hi, Miku, you can't go. Kutara, asamanta. Siya at utag si Puke, graduate na daw siya. Say, Sige, kuyog ko. Kay, maski asa ni siya, kuyog mo yung ko. Kung asa ko niya dad on, kuyog ko. So, about me dili, and then, uh, we came into the venue, we were warmly welcomed, and as we were walking, so it was it was mentioned that I would be a speaker. <laughs> no, so while while I was uh, while I was seated there, I would also like to that said, no, na I did not prepare any speech. I do know that I have to honor the opportunity to speak before a room full of winners. You are all you are all uh, graduates, and you should be very proud of yourselves. Um, I was I was telling Richard because after when he became well when he became mayor and he graduated from school and all, he keeps on learning, 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 and I'd always tell him, because I remember when I when I graduated no from college, I said. I want to be, that was really my greatest dream, not to be a housewife. But I realize now that I'm older and as my world has gotten bigger and, uh, you know, you become very purposeful about your life and where you are in your life no, as you as you become older, <clears throat> I, I find the need also to keep on learning. So, but in my on my end, uh, I have to find the time to do that. And like you guys, you have already you have already done that. I know a lot of you have um, multiple uh, degrees, no? So pakpakin niyo yung mga kagrinyo. I take inspiration from all of you. So for this for this moment, I'd like to share with you just three things. I know a lot of you are are older than I am and there isn't anything I can possibly say today that you don't already know or that you haven't found out for yourselves but I'd like to say it just the same so I listed down three things number one to be open to possibility and for perspective let me tell you about where I came from and why I say that because I came from Leyte, specifically this very small place called Ormoc City which is a tiny dot in the western part and our, our place, prior to the flood of 1991, was practically unheard of. We had a very homemade and handmade kind of life, and I was just this girl living in a normal life, living a normal life in a happy home with a happy childhood. My parents, despite having lived and studied in bigger cities, never once made me or my siblings feel that Ormoc was not good enough or that Leyte was not big enough, or that there was anything wrong about being a provinciana. We were never taught that, ah, mas nindot yun kung mag-states, mas nindot yun kung mag-abroad, mas nindot yun may eskwila, o glayo nga lugar. No, we were brought up in a home where we were taught where we were was good enough, and that we had to make do with um, what we had. So I never had a complex na, ato na kung Manila, kinal na mawa, kung Bisaya nga aksan, kaya di naman ginamawa. <laughs> and I embrace that. I am proud of that. I am proud of where I, I came from. And we should all be. So even if there are words that are not it's okay. This is where we, this is where we came from. Diba? So I grew up in that environment knowing that a more polished setting did not mean a better shot at life. No. Because where we were and what we had was beautiful the way it was, even in the grander scheme of things. As such, maybe that is why the stuff of my dreams 
were also very simple. Like I said kanina, my grand plan was to honor my parents by doing well in school, finish college, fall in love and be a wife, become a mother, build a happy home, and live happily ever after. I wanted to be a wife, I wanted to be a, a mother, and I said there were three things I said I would never do. Never, 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 never do this. So number one on that list was join showbiz. I said I would never join showbiz. But as fate would have it, I married a man from showbiz. <laughs> this movie star that I fell in love with at 12 years old when I saw him in Blue Sang Itim. <laughs> Dili pa siya, dili pa siya big star at to, dili pa siya sikat. But when I saw him, I said, ako na. <laughs> I did not know who he was. I just knew that he was the he was the man of my dreams. I wanted the tall, dark, and handsome. And, and handsome, yeah. And I was grade, grade 6, 12 years old. Kunya, may gani wa ko maanod sa baha. Kaya yung sama tao na mo pagkita, di ba? <laughs> Because I was grade 6, 12 years old, and I did not get to meet him until I was 18 years old. So, dugay dugay sa kukuha ko eh. <laughs> but uh, when I met him at 18 years old, uh, he, he also was in a relationship. I was in a relationship. So, we never really got together until um, we got married when I was 23, 23 years old. Diba? But that's what I'm saying. I said, Digyo ko mag-artista, but I married a man from showbiz. And somehow, that opened doors for me also in show business. I never made a movie. I never got that far. But I did some hosting. I did some, some TV shows, which I also enjoyed, and which I would never have experienced if I cast it in stone na dili ko mag-showbiz. So that was a very nice part of my life also. Now, the next thing I said that I would never do was join politics. No? And in 2013, life found me doing just that. I ended up running for Congress, and I am now on my 10th year as representative of the 4th District of Leyte. And this has been one of the most purposeful parts of my life. I never dreamed this. Um, when I became a representative and I was faced with all the challenges, I'd always say, then I should have taken up law. When I was in UP, when I was a student in UP, was business management. But, you know, you learn as you go along. And that's the one thing that my, my takeaway from all these parts of my life that I did not plan for. And my takeaway always is, yeah, you do not plan, but you must bloom where you are planted. No? So, ayaw ninyo usike ang higayun because not everybody is given the opportunity. So, where you are planted, you must bloom. Remember that. The third thing I said I would never do, and yata nidi naginim hita po, thank God, uh, is join a beauty contest. <laughs> no? So, that's, that's way past na my, that's way past na my, my years because I'm already 27. <laughs> So I realized, you know, that your life pursues you and there's no escaping it. And maybe, just maybe, as a matter of coping, we have to consent to what is on the spot where you are standing. And like I said, bloom where you are planted. So in my life, I have had to enter doors I did not even know would be open for me, walk roads that were strange and unfamiliar at every turn. I had to make friends with both uncertainty and possibility. And much as that has broken and stretched and shaped me, the sum of it has also discovered a courage I did not know I even had. That's number one. Number two, many things we have to do afraid. So do it afraid. I learned that from my husband. He is the bravest man I know. And I don't say that because he is my husband. I say that because I know him now as a person. I am an overthinker. He is not. When he sees something that needs to be done, he does it right away. Kung ako pa maghuwat pa ko o perfect time, mga jikus ginoo, maghuwat ko o sign, nothing wrong with that, but 
you waste so much time just not moving and overanalyzing. My husband, the warrior that he is, he's always action man. He moves, uh, makes calculated choices based on the options that are there, and I learned that. I learned that there is no, there is no such thing as perfect. There is no such thing as the perfect now, as the perfect time. There is only now. And you have to embrace now because sometimes the opportunity just presents itself once. Once it's gone, that's it. No? So even if you have to do things afraid, just do it. As Nike said, just do it. Because the brave man is not the one who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. I did not make that up. That was, that was a quote from Nelson Mandela. Number three, I'd like to share with you what I, what I always tell people who ask me and Richard what we want for our daughter. There's so much pressure on our daughter because her, her dad is very um, accomplished. Um, people always ask us, what do you want Juliana to become? Do you want her to be an athlete like the dad, a volleyball player, a fencer, which she join showbiz? Uh, which also join politics and I always say that I do not want, we, Richard and myself, we do not want to impose our dreams on our daughter because our only prayer from the time, from the time she was born really, I ask God to train our hearts to only pray that she become the person that God designed her to be, whatever that is. And when you, when you acknowledge that, that we all have a place under the sun, we are reminded of the very thing that we learned in elementary, and that is to be kind. Because we live in a world now where being the best is the top prize. Who is the best? Who is the fastest? Who is the brightest? Who is the richest? Who is the bravest? But in the grander scheme of things, we lose so many of our values just by wanting to be the best. But when we acknowledge that we each have a purpose, that we are all connected, that we all need each other to make this world a better place. We realize that we do not have to be unkind. And that is what I want to remind all of us here in this room, that in a world that is increasingly cruel and cold in the pursuit of dreams, we have to remember to be kind. Because in our sunset years, how do we want to be remembered? It's important that we nurture relationships. It's important that as we fulfill our dreams and get to the top, we do not step on anyone. Sige na lang lagi ng ikaw giilad, basta dili lang ikaw ang nangilad. Di ba? Dili yun na koan. I don't know if that's applicable to Kugma, but, but in terms of how we deal with people, it should be that way. Do not, do not step on others just to get to the top. It will not be worth it. Because even if along the way you have been stepped on, trust that there is someone greater up there watching over us all and he will, he will make it right for you. So many instances in my life we have been, we have been um, bullied, we have been, we have been bashed, but when you sow the right seeds somewhere along the way, things will pan out the right way for you because that is the divine economy of grace. Okay, so with that, with those three things, I leave you with my warmest and best wishes and congratulations for this wonderful achievement in your lives. This is a milestone, and like I said, you should all be very proud of yourselves. And since I have the mic, honey, I am very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Honorable Lucy Marie Torres Gomez, for that very you, huh? inspiring message. Are you not inspired? Grabe, no? Nindot jud kaayo. Okay, so at this point, let us award the plaque of recognition to Honorable Lucy Marie Torres Gomez. To read the citation, may I call in Dr.